hello and welcome everybody. Janet Becker's here and it is great to see you all through there. <laughs> um, I've got a wonderful guest for you today. I'm really, really um, looking forward to introducing you to Steve Daly. G'day, Steve. Hey, Janet. So, so great to be here. Yes. Great to connect again. So Steve and I, Steve's from the Entrepreneurs Excellence um, Alliance. And the other week, Steve sort of um, reached out to me and asked me if I would be a, a podcast guest for him, which I always love those opportunities of being able to share. And you know, like sometimes you meet people and you just click. You just go, look, you know what? If we were living close together, I know we'd probably be going having coffees every week. So... Um, so we've, Steve and I have been going, you know what, we just need to just share as many things as we can together. And so I'm sure that this will be the first of many. <laughs> yes. um, one thing that I loved is, and that what we're going to be talking about today is, do you want to tell us, just give a brief overview of what people can look forward to on our call? Yeah, well, we, we've agreed to, uh, I'm going to reveal... Uh, a framework that I use with my clients called the seven triggers to seven figures. So for people that uh, wish or believe, it doesn't matter that they could be hitting a million dollars in their business. Uh, I have a, a, a framework or roadmap for how to do that. Excellent. And I just, I just love that seven triggers to seven figures. I love me some good alliteration and that's, <laughs> and doesn't it, I just, I love the idea that there's, that, that they're triggers as well. To me, right. that shows that, you know, to me, like a trigger is something that sets something off fast. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. So before we dive into that, can you share with everybody here so we can get to know you? Like who, who is it that you serve and yep. what is it that you do? And also I'm just really curious about like, why you know yeah 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 over to you baby so uh my primary audience now is uh uh an individual that's uh as they say in texas here in the states it ain't their first rodeo uh right. they've been around the block in life and in business uh i the way i couch it as a seasoned entrepreneur so uh, it's an individual, Janet, that uh, has a business, uh, but and it's and it's okay. Uh, they're 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 proud of uh, having their business and it's working at a level, but they know it's got a lot more potential. But that combined with, they also recognize they're not twenty anymore, and uh, right. time to kind of hit the accelerator a little bit. And so, what is it that I need to do? to really make this thing go and not only serve the marketplace that my business is organized around, but serve my life. Uh, entrepreneurs, as we all uh, have experienced, get to a place where uh, the business, the vision that we've had sort of hijacks our life. Mm. And we want to get at some point back to uh, why we built this thing in the first place. And uh, okay. so th that's the individual and the urgency why they uh, why people elect to to work with me is they are and uh, it, this is not intended to be uh, arrogant at all but they're wise enough smart enough to know that if they didn't if they don't have outside direction input uh guidance uh a kick in the keister that they're just not gonna really get to where they want to be and mm. so they uh, are humble enough to say you know yeah uh, I need to, to have somebody in my corner. I love it. I love how incredibly clear you are on that because that automatically eliminates people who haven't been in business for a while um, right. because that's a completely different market, even though they can also be going to seven figures and some will do oh, that yeah, absolutely. much faster yeah. than the people that you mm -hmm. may be, be working with. Um, absolutely. But absolutely. there's completely different lessons that you need to focus on at that early stage. So, I just yeah. I love that clarity that you've got. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people who are listening here today that are going to go, yeah, that's me. Or, that's me. you know what? Yeah, perfect. I don't want that to be me. I don't want me to be getting frustrated about, you know, not having that, you know, the life balance as well as that success. So, yeah, um, I very think good. Very true. Both groups here will be able to get some really good lessons 
from today. And I'm also Good. curious, Steve, like what led you to have this expertise? Okay, so I'll, I'll make this as short as I can. Um, yeah. So uh, my first career out of, of college, I was a national level swimming coach. All right. I worked with aspiring swimmers or people, swimmers that were aspiring to be at national and international level competition, going to oh. the Olympics, et cetera. And it was a wonderful laboratory uh, about human performance and success. And I learned stuff I use every day today uh, about that. But I realized that I didn't want to spend the rest of my life walking around a swimming pool with wet uh, tennis shoes on. So I uh, noticed an opportunity to build a business. Uh, it was in Houston, Texas at the time, and it was explosive. I went from literally $200 uh, sleeping in the, the pump room of a swimming pool. Um, and in less than two years, I had a $3 million business. 300 people working for me. Wow. Uh, terrific uh, notoriety in the country and, or in the community. And started to get uh, other entrepreneurs coming and business owners coming to me and saying, wow, uh, you've really done some amazing things. Picking my brain. One day, a guy that owned a sporting goods store uh, came to me and he said, I want you to come over to my shop. Uh, I'm going to sit down and I really want to really get into your head about what you did to build your business. So we did that. And after, I don't know, a couple hours, he said, he pulled out his checkbook and he said, so what do I owe you? And I said, I, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be going to charge you anything. And he was insistent. And I said, you just, you know, whatever, whatever you think. He gave me a check for a thousand dollars. And so I went back to my office. This is way before the internet. And uh, I told my printer, I want you to make a new business card for me, Steve Daly, business coach. Now, this was before the idea of a coach or a business coach was even a thing. This was 30 years ago. And um, now you see business coach on every business card from babysitters to attorneys. <laughs> but uh, I love but that. Uh, uh, yeah, I just I basically said that's that's. That's what I, that's, that's who I want to be now, you know? And so I wow. sort of graduated uh, to, to talking about that and, and here I am. That is such a great story. And you know what, it's, it's, it would be really tempting. We may actually do this in the future. Get back to even like, what did you do? We won't do that right now, but what did you do in that first business that made it go so explosive and the lessons you learned? Because well, I'm sure yeah. we're going to be learning some of those lessons through the seven triggers because that Absolutely. Itself yeah. is just something that, um, yeah, to me would require a few, you know, a good bottle of wine and sitting down and having a yak and picking <laughs> your brain on that one. <laughs> That's right. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't have to pay me a thousand bucks if you give me a glass of wine. How about that? <laughs> good Happy. deal. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and that actually, actually, just as an aside, because we're recording this on Zoom for people who are watching this on the video. And one of the things that I do do with some of my JV partners and some of my clients that I've that have kind of, you know, moved on because they've had their success and then we still keep in contact is what I call red wine Zooms. And so we'll get together cool. and we'll have a red wine <laughs> Zoom. Oh, I love it. I love that. That's in front perfect. of the camera here with a glass of wine and just catch <laughs> up. So you, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. great. Love it. Yeah. Um, so, all right, that's, well, that's brilliant. I'm really looking forward to hearing these seven triggers, especially now that I can see where they've come from. That's um, really cool. So, first of all, let's look into why the seven triggers are important. Like, let's look at, so people can know if this is something that they would be using in their own business, and then we'll really dive in, in into those seven triggers. Yeah, great. Uh, good, uh, good direction there. Good framework, uh, Janet. So um, when we, all of us, when we start a business, and no matter what stage you're in right now, those that are uh, watching this, um, you have an aspiration, you have a vision that usually has to do with uh, the short list is uh, wealth, you know, plenty of of, of money to do the things that you want, to have the, uh, the lifestyle that you want, to uh, you know, really have no, uh, no top end to what it is that you're generating. 
uh, and also uh, a, a, an element of, of time uh, to pursue all the other important things in life. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationships that are important to you, the you know, taking care of yourself, uh, travel or adventure or challenges of different kinds, uh, and giving back to uh, you know, community or uh, areas that, that, are, uh, that you're passionate about. We all have those things in the background. But an odd thing happens on the way to that uh, for most of us. And that is, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the business can sort of hijack uh, the, that, uh, that, that vision, that ability to actually have all of those things. Now, um, I've, I've, I've learned, you're right, my personal experience back in the day, as I say, back in the dinosaur days when I had that first business, I, uh, I did learn a lot, a lot of things that I learned from the failures, I learned from the successes. However, the most valuable uh, uh, laboratory and, and experience and insight has come from working with people that have come to me to, to help them with their businesses and then have had explosive success. I, would, uh, I am not gonna take credit, uh, certainly not full credit, uh, for uh, that success because the people I work with have to do the work. Yeah. However, uh, as a catalyst, I, I've, I, I, can, I think I can be proud of. And here a few years ago, it's been probably 10 now, I started to take a look at the history of the people that I've worked with and, um, and, and ask the question, what were the specific things that that I can look back on that predictably created a catalyst, a launch, an, a spike in uh, the, the new success. And then moreover, what sustained it, right? So what were the things that really kept it going once we got it going? Mm -hmm. And that's the genesis of the seven triggers. I basically compiled uh, what I believe are the, the catalysts that not only create new uh, new success, but also endured, and in the context of building a life uh, that fulfills the vision that we had when we started our business in the first place. Mm, love it. That you know, and you, that is, it's really interesting you say that because it, it is that thing where you know you have this vision, and then all of a sudden you realize. I'm trapped. That's yeah. a really, really common thing. And I love that you've gone on and you've looked at the people who've actually created that success. Because once you've been doing this for a while, you do notice that there are some people that you just go, whoa, like, you know, they just had to get pointed in the right direction and they took right. it off. Right. Like, what can I learn mm. from them? Like, what yes. made that so special? Um, and so it's that classic thing of, you know, you you get better at being the coach because you have great clients and you, oh, you're yeah. actually watching what they do and learning from them. Yeah. And it's um, so much fun in it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. See that. Loving yeah. it. Well, let's, let's dive straight in. So over to you, baby. Number one of seven. <laughs> okay. So the first and most important uh, aspect of the framework is there is a sequence um, baked into it where for I'll just go give you the overview and then we'll dive into number one. So uh, we want to perfect our own priorities is the way I catch it. That is reconnect to the most important things that we are doing this for. Not unlike the question that you asked earlier about why, why does it matter basically? So we want to take a look at our business uh, from a priority perspective uh, therefore putting ourselves in, in a position of leading our path. One of the things that I've had to correct with, with my clients over the years, uh, predictably, is that the business is pulling or leading them rather than them pulling or leading the business. So we right. start there. Th then we have to take a look at the, at the internal workings of the business. I, I kind of visualize a, a machine or a big you know, just imagine a big power plant sort of a, of an, of an analogy. And you've got a lot of things in your business that, that need to be, uh, I call it grease your gears. Uh, they need to be lubricated. You need to make sure they're tuned up. We need to take the most important things about your business 
and grease those gears. The next thing, mm. now we're in a position with the priorities in place and the, the gears greased, we're in a position to then address our market. My term for it is to mesmerize our market and to basically be a, uh, a, 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 an inspirational um, asset to those that we want to serve. And then finally, uh, we want to then multiply, I call it multiply our mojo. So multiply the things that we know create the, our, our business as an asset to not only who we serve, but as I was talking about earlier, our own priorities for ourselves. So if we go back around to perfecting priorities, the first triggers, we'll go two at a time here. Yes. The first triggers, first two triggers are authenticate and integrate. So authentication is about basically getting in touch with who are we really? Just because you can doesn't mean you should, as I've said. And uh, we sometimes are uh, serving people we don't really care about. Putting things in the market that, um, that uh, you know, we're not terribly passionate about. Uh, trying to put things out or do things inside our business that we're not terribly uh, that we don't have a lot of competency. So authentication is getting the intersection between uh, our passion, our competencies, the products that we're, that we're selling, and then the market that we, that really, we love and they love us. Oh, look, and you wanna, know what, that, go ahead, go ahead. I, that is so important because as you're saying that, I'm looking back at some of the changes I've made in just the last year or so, because you can go, well, you know what, if you've got something in your, offerings that doesn't feel quite right right or your branding is not quite right well big deal just work with it as long as it's making the profit but mm -hmm. it does undermine everything that you're doing like it does, it does it... really you know you you've if you're not congruent you're always going to be second guessing on things or not throwing yourself in yeah, hundred percent. Well, and it, and it's, it sucks the energy. Uh, it sucks away energy that can and should be used for something that's way more powerful. Uh, it, to again serve you and serve the market that you're serving. You're exactly mm. right. Mm, absolutely. I mean, that's for people who've been following me for a while, and you'll know that wonderful web women that I'd had for ten years launched my business. You know, won me numerous awards. I closed it because yeah. of these exact reasons that you've talked about. And Sometimes it has just you have to do that. freed up yeah. so much energy. Yeah. yeah. The way I say it is void creates value. So when you, when you purposefully take away something, you have now a void that you can fill with greater or better value. Oh, that's a great, that's a really good reframe. I love it. Great one, Steve. I'm going to write that one down. Void. <laughs> creates value that's a yes. good one write that down everybody that's a great one every time that you're thinking can i take can i make this decision you know it's too scary to let that thing go what if yeah. void creates value love it that's a good one all right over to you baby okay all right <laughs> so now once we have the authentication in place now we want to integrate and integration is about integrating the 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 role the business has and that we've repositioned now by authenticating our, our view of priorities, uh, integrating it with our life. So mm. everyone that all among us here that listening, all that uh, I've worked with, Janet, I'm sure this is the case for everybody that you serve, uh, all are driven by my observation, four distinct motives, wealth, health, connection, and influence. Wealth is obvious, taking care of ourselves financially down in the future. Health is about being vibrant. Who wants to be rich and, and, and laying on a gurney with tubes coming out of our orifices, mm. right? Uh, connection is about relationships. All of us crave that. We all have a, a, need, a desire to belong and feel like we matter. And finally, speaking of mattering, influence is about legacy about making a difference about feeling like that we've been here for a reason uh i encourage people to think about their about implementing their legacy not waiting for it to be assigned to them uh what a painful thing to wait until after we're gone to find out what meaning we had let's do it now let's say, let's declare it right now oh i love it so 
when we, when we integrate, we are asking the question, important question, does the business serve wealth, health connection, and influence for us? And if it doesn't, well, then what are we doing that for? You know, what, what's, what's the point? What's the use? So that's, that's the second trigger. That is, and I love how you've been so clear on those four things. There, it's always really lovely to be able to measure, you know, yes. am I doing it to be able to have a measure against it? And, yep. yeah, and it's when, you know, when it comes to that legacy, a lot of times people think, well, legacy is what I can focus on when I've made it. That's yeah. kind of like you only do that when you've completely mastered everything else and then you can start focusing. Yeah, and then one day, someday never happens. Yeah. yeah. Love it. All right. So now with those things in place, we're ready to grease the gears. And so the third trigger is concentrate. Uh, I play with this as like cleaning out the closet. We all have a, a closet that's packed with stuff that we've been stuffing in there uh, as just a holding place or a drawer. Uh, we all have a junk drawer our glove compartment in our car. It's just got stuff. Uh, if we don't stop and say, okay, uh, what do I really need for my business to be successful? And what's just stuff uh, and clean out the closet, then we are, we are absolutely guaranteed to bog down the machine of the business. And so those listening here, if you feel like your business is slow, sluggish, uh, taking too long. It's done, you know, you don't wake up and feel like it's pulling you into it. You know, that's probably because you got, you got to clean out your closet. You need to zero in on, you know, what is it that you really need? What is it that the, is really appreciated? What is it that really works? What is it that really pleases you? Uh, all of those things that we, that we uh, uh, define back in Authenticate and everything else uh, gets, gets tossed or put aside. Maybe it's not a forever gone thing. But certainly, we don't want to waste time on that. That's, Once we've um, done, go ahead. I'm just from your experience, Steve, um, are, are there particular things that you find that people, when they do this exercise, that there's a certain group of things that are the clutter? Or yeah. if it's easier, the opposite of like the certain things that are always the focus? Glad you asked. So uh, the things that become clutter are, uh, and, and I'll give you the short list, uh, pretty much predictably come in the form of doing things that somebody else can do or we don't really like to do or that we don't really need to do just because we have this odd uh, thing that's wired in all of us that we'd want to be busy. Right. Um, another category are things that we've fallen in love with that nobody else really has. So oh. products, <laughs> ideas. <laughs> right. Uh, people even, you know, uh, I've found, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, oftentimes people will have, uh, business people will have employees that were around there in the beginning. They've fallen in love with them. They, they've been loyal. They, you know, uh, but they're not, they're not valuable now to where the business is. Oh, and that's a tough, tough one. It's tough to let go, but look, there's a great place for everyone. And it, if, 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 if there's no value um, or not a great deal of value that you're experiencing from those people, then they feel that too. And so they're not really happy. Yeah, and right. so that's a, that's a tough category. Another category of, of clutter is uh, 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 in, a cat, in, a, in a word, nonsense things that are non-revenue producing, things that are not progressive. You know, uh, uh, for example, uh, 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 insatiable uh, desire to just network, but you're not really turning that into right. any sort of business or opportunity. You just love the belly bump and the, the, the handshaking, the business card passing and the, you know, having the cup, cup of coffee or whatever. Oh, right. wait a second, wait a second. Uh, that probably is bogging down uh, uh, what you might uh, otherwise be doing. So that's just a short list. That's a good point, actually, because you mentioned about connection being one of the four things that people are looking for that your business should be able to provide for you. So, yeah. you know, as you talked about, they're not using it strategically. So they're yeah. looking for that connection. So maybe they need to be looking at that connection component 
strategically in their business, if that's- hey, Listen, if, if you're going to a net, on that point specifically, you're going to network meetings because uh, you're craving connection, I would say more productively is take your spouse out for lunch or uh, take your, uh, bring your kid to work so that they're learning something uh, or, and, and appreciating what you're doing or uh, proactively target people that you want to learn from and take them out to lunch and interview them. You know, there's some that. other connection opportunities that are way more powerful than just sort of showing up because you said you wanted to be part of the club sort of thing. Love it. That is really wise, wise advice. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on to, to trigger four, yeah. I call it invigorate. Now we're still in the grease the gear stage, but this is about now uh, invigorating, uh, bringing new energy, uh, new fire, new fuel is what I call it into your business. So look, uh, we all got here as business owners because we created something, we invented something, we got excited about it. We had a, what I call a fist pounding moment that we knew that there was something that needed to be done and by golly, I'm gonna be the one to do it. What is now in you that needs a new fist pounding moment? What is it that you've learned from, you know, the seven triggers framework was that for me, it's like, God, there's got to be a formula here. I've helped some people get to, a lot of people get to seven figures, but what's the common denominator? What's the thing that I can actually now serve people better with? And so, you know, I created that. So uh, there is juice that you can add to your business by reinvigorating that, uh, that uh, inventiveness, the innovation gene that you have started the business. And also uh, putting new, a fresh coat of paint on things. Take a look at your website. Has it been, has it gotten sort of tired? Is, uh, are there broken links? Um, take a look at the way that you interact with the people if you have a team. Uh, how do you interact with them? Uh, do you just kind of do an obligatory birthday cake when they have birthdays or do you surprise them with, uh, 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 for example, I was working with a client last week, I said, listen, how do you show appreciation to your, to your employees? Well, we know we go to lunch sometime, blah, blah, blah. And I went, you know, <laughs> oh, oh, you put me to sleep there. I said, how about, how about this? How about you go, uh, uh, you know, learn, you know enough about them now uh, that you can uh, identify a, 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 a great place for them to, to do a staycation locally where uh, in an extraordinary hotel, uh, treat them to dinner there. Uh, you suggest a shop a, a shopping uh, list for that one. For this guy, give him a, a canoe or kayak lessons. He's an outdoor guy. Um, you know, what can we do to really show them that you really appreciate them? And by the way, it's not going to cost that much money. And mm -hmm. so when I say invigorate, it's like bringing new life, new fire into your business. Mm. I love it. I love it. It's, and you know, that's for so many things, isn't it? It's almost like a romance sometimes a business, isn't it? So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Bring in, bring in the spark back in. That's good. Yes. All right. Get, do we still got time to go through? Yeah, some more let's here? go. Let's okay, go. Let me look at my so, time. We're, we're doing well. We're okay. All right. So the fifth trigger is penetrate. And now we're moving into mesmerize your market. Um, and I'll, uh, I, could, I could take an hour on this one, but I'll take uh, uh, just a few minutes. Uh, penetration is about creating a synergistic penetration marketplace reach strategy that involves both picking and pulling people to your message. So picking is choosing people, groups, audiences that you think might be receptive to what you're doing that you can uh, serve them with, solve a problem and serve them with. This would be direct selling, it would be uh, speaking, it would be uh, strategies that you identify specifically, I know something about you that I think I can help with. But then we have to marry that with a pull strategy. A pull strategy is when we uh, create awareness uh, uh, strategically about what we're doing, the problems that we solve, and uh, have an ongoing conversation with, with folks 
to bring them closer and closer and closer to what it is that we're doing. I've found in my experience, Janet, that, that most entrepreneurs, small business owners are really good at one or the other and rarely have a clear strategy for both of those things. Right. So this is a really important work. We have a foundation with the other triggers, but then we, we absolutely need to create those strategies. Mm. Now, with, with that, and this is married with trigger five, resonate, or six, I'm sorry, resonate. When we take a look at those conversations, whether they be pick or pull, uh, we absolutely have to differentiate ourselves from all the other choices out in the marketplace. And the one way to do that is to create a transformation story. Uh, I maintain, you know, you can go to the bookstore, go to Amazon, and you can get all kinds of books, business books. One will say, I don't care what business you're in, you're in the sales business. I don't care what business you think you're in, but you're in the marketing business. I don't care what business you're in, but you have to be engaged with social media. Okay, all those things might be true, but my take is the business that all of us absolutely are in is transformation. Mm. The people we serve are at a particular place that they're very aware of where something is missing. And they visualize a life, a business, a state where that's been answered, that missing piece. And who they hire, who they spend money on is people that guide them through a transformation. Many businesses, this is an important trigger, critical trigger, because most businesses that I've worked with uh, uh, that, that weren't getting to seven figures and figured this out made a massive leap by recognizing right. that they weren't selling the end result that's what they thought they were selling. They were, what they really need to be selling is, this, is, is positioning themselves as a guide through the transformation. I don't care if you're selling cars, any kind of services, uh, websites, uh, gosh, you name it. You are guiding people in a transformation if they are paying you money. You may not recognize it, it. but then we have to, once you do, then now we've got to tell a story about it. That is so good to hear. I mean, you are talking my language because that's a big part about what we talk about here in, in my tribe is around yeah. the transformational journey. And I just love that you've pointed out there that's businesses that people may not see. Like you, you can get it when you're a coach or a healer. Um, but you've talked about like selling cars, for example. I yeah. love that you said once you were able to really act as the guide on the transformational journey. That was the big thing that made the huge difference to right. the revenue in the business. Absolutely. That is, it, it, that is a really, really important point for people to take home. Yeah. Are you really super clear on you being the guide that you take them on that journey? Yeah. Really important. I love that, Steve. Everyone that you've spent money with uh, and even, and look at the things you spent the most money with, I guarantee you, you gave them money, you paid them money because you saw them as that perfect guide for transformation. Mm. Yeah. All right, so we've got authenticate, integrate, concentrate, invigorate, penetrate, and resonate. Now, oh, I, this. oh, I do love all this iteration. This is just. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and so now we're on his trigger number seven. This is the most important one that basically pulls it all together. Uh, as you heard me say earlier, this is where we multiply our mojo and trigger number seven is duplicate. Duplicate. All right, so, so what do I mean here? Most that I've worked with, and especially those that were, they were hitting their head on a ceiling and they couldn't break through, have positioned themselves in their business as the sun. In other words, the business revolves around them Mm. And their significance is tied to it. Now, we come by this honestly. Worked our butts off, created a business. We know how it works. We know what, you know, all the things, all the buttons to push. We, you know, our marketplace perhaps falls in love with this. All that's awesome. But then we start to have this quiet voice in our head or our heart that basically says, and that's why you're important. That's how you're meaningful. This is who you were meant to be. And we buy that as though that's the end game. Oh, well, folks, yeah, I'm that's gonna, a home truth, that one. Uh, that's right. I'm going to break it to you. 
you're not done and you better not be because if you let go of what you think is making you feel significance and give yourself a promotion to a higher level of significance like let's talk about make a difference in the world like really uh, do something that your grandkids, your great grandkids, your great 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 grandkids will be talking about. By the way, do you know who your great great grandpa is and what he was known for? Unfortunately, many of us don't. No, not my and, great great grandpa. So, no. Yeah, and so what is it you're up to while you're taking up space on the planet here that you can graduate to? Now. In order for you to graduate your significance, once you have a glimpse of that, we have, to, we have some work to do. Uh, obviously, we duplicate ourselves through other people. Uh, I had a great interview today on my podcast uh, with, with a guy that uh, <laughs> actually did so great at disconnecting his importance to the function of the business that all of a sudden he woke up and said, well, there's nothing for me to do. And he said, so I started another business. No. You know? <laughs> Good <laughs> on so, him. Yeah, exactly. And so you want to work your way out of being necessary in the business through other people to the best mm -hmm. that you can. Another way to duplicate is to multiply the impact of your business. So if you've been, you know, this uh, first company I, I started, as I mentioned back in the dinosaur days, you know, is serving one market. Uh, just reflexively, I, nobody told me to do this, but I, once I started making it work there in Houston, Texas, I started looking at, okay, where else in the country has this unique environment with the real estate boom that was going on? I was uh, serving master plan communities is basically the, the essence of this. Uh, where else is this taking place that might appreciate what I'm doing here? And I started making plans to multiply that. Uh, so you can, you know, whether it's uh, opening up new locations or franchising or uh, licenses or whatever. There's, th there's duplication there, multiplying right. your mojo there. Uh, another way to, to, to duplicate is, is to take a look at who you're serving and what else do they need. I worked with a, um, one of the guys that I helped get to seven figures was an attorney. He was a real estate attorney and uh, was really good at, at real estate law, but he started to notice that uh, he also got, gained a lot of perspective on real estate investment. And so he started offering services to give advice and direction on good versus bad investments that turned into a whole new revenue stream. So there's a lot of different things we can do. Um, you know, uh, uh, to, the, the idea or the message here is uh, until we multiply ourselves, we'll always be anchored. And to the degree we multiply ourselves, we'll be free. I love it. They, that is really great advice and just so grounded. And you know what, that point that you made about, you know, once you've built up your business, that becomes your significance. It can become your identity. Yes. And to have got to that point, like go you, like you've put in yeah. a lot of work. You've taken the risks. You deserve to be yeah. able to go, you know what, I, I rock. Look what I've achieved, but it's a double edged sword, just as you said, Steve. You know, yeah. when you got to there, you know, that's actually the thing that's going to hold you back. Yeah. So yeah. it's, and, and there's a lot of pe people, and I know with my first business, an internet art gallery, it was hard for me to close it yeah. because absolutely I was this really fascinating, interesting Janet who had this online art gallery such a creative person that was an identity it was yep. a really difficult thing to let that go um you're so right very important to let it go because you know there's uh, i know that there are a lot of people listening that will go oops oops yeah. it's okay and 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 this is why you know uh so so why do you need a coach well we've mentioned several times these things are are good all these triggers are great. We can probably do a certain level of do it yourself, but if you have guidance, you have support, you have accountability, mm -hmm. uh, then all of a sudden uh, the game changes dramatically and we add a tremendous amount of acceleration to really uh, getting things done.
Yeah. So, uh, so that's, that is that's brilliant. Yeah. You have, this has been a really interesting, really interesting topic. You're such a wise man, Steve, because I love Thank that you. for people who are listening, if you're at, if you fit that definition that Steve gave of who he works with, that you've, you know, your business has been going and go you, but you know what? It's, it's going to stagnate. You can't get up to that next level. Or even if you're just starting out, mm -hmm. I reckon today, no matter what level that you are at, oh yeah, just looking at these whole seven triggers in the beautiful way that you have talked about it and the examples you've given will really help you to just get that beautiful bird's eye view and to be able to see, you know what, maybe this is the first trigger I need to look at. Yeah. Um, now, Steve, you've got somewhere where people can go to be actually to be able to get a copy of all of these, so that they've yes, got that absolutely, absolutely. And and let me just say one quick thing about the last point you made. This is uh, sequential, but you but <laughs> I've wrote a little book called "The Three Simple Truths," and the first truth is something is better than nothing. Uh, and so, start anywhere. If you've if you've heard something here that, that kind of just smacks you in the in the head as well I, I need to start there it's okay um but to get this uh the in, an interactive version of this framework janet uh if if your uh listeners viewers want to just go simply to achievementbridge.com name of my company is achievement bridge achievementbridge.com uh you'll see uh popping right up on your screen is an invitation uh to download the uh, the seven triggers here, and I've created an interactive framework that's just packed with uh, guidance uh, for how you can not only understand these things, but implement them. And of course, I'm available to help you with that process if, if you're interested in that type of support. That is brilliant. And so people can also find about the way that you can help them if they, if they go to, um, what was it? The entrepreneur, entrepreneur excellence, entrepreneur, entrepreneur excellence. com is the name of the, the community that we're creating. that's organized around this and other frameworks for success as an entrepreneur, uh, go to that page. And, uh, there's an inspiring video about halfway down that articulates our manifesto, the entrepreneur excellence manifesto. And uh, you won't want to miss that, whether you whether it's of any interest to you to uh, explore or not. At least get a get a taste of that video; it'll make your day. And uh, yeah, happy for people to go there as well. That is brilliant. So I really recommend everybody go and get that report because just to review over there, and just like Steve said, if there's one thing that you just said like slaps you in the face, hit you over the head, yeah. whatever it is, yeah, yeah. Start there, start there, because that's the big focus. You know, the, if you've, one of the things that I truly, truly want for everybody that is listening here is just take one action yeah. today, you know, to set yourself right. What am I going to do? And I'm going to implement it this week and then come and let Steve know, come and contact him over there. So once you've, once you've gone and got your report, you'll have his email address, let him know what action you took. Oh, I'd love it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's one Absolutely of the most it. rewarding things that you can do for us is to know that you're going to go and do something with this. Yes, and come absolutely. and let me know in all the different ways that you can stalk me. Come and let me know as well. And also, if you're, if you're listening to this on iTunes, I'd really appreciate if you would leave a comment or a rating and talk about this particular episode. What was it that Steve Daly helped you with? And, you know, what is it that's been your aha that you're going to go and take action on? commit to doing the action it will make a huge difference if you do that from every single um podcast episode one per week that's going to be 52 actions you've taken this year yeah yeah powerful. imagine the difference you can make in your business so thank you so much for your time today steve you've been absolutely brilliant Thank you. And, um, yeah, I can see a red wine Zoom coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. Okay. Bye. And bye, everybody.